So, as you all know, the festival is a celebration of African American life, music, and culture, and it's been a part of our region here in Baltimore since 1976, a little before my time, but still, that means I've just grown up with it. So it is the ultimate destination for the July 4th weekend. So it attracts almost a half million people. You know, we host world-class entertainment and dynamic exhibits of arts, education, and heritage. It has a tremendous economic impact on this area. Last year, all of our hotels were full. We expect the same thing this summer. So in addition to the fun, we have health and wellness, financial literacy, culture and education have always been an integral part of the festival, in addition to, of course, the outstanding local and national artists and entertainers. So over the years, the festival has welcomed international sensations like Anita Baker, Charlie Wilson, Erica Badu, the late Tina Marie, Donnie McClurkin, In Vogue, and last year we brought the house down with Elle Varner, Music Soul Child, and the Legends of Hip Hop featuring MC Light, Big Daddy Kane, Slick Rick, Curtis Blow, and Salt and Pepper. And I did think I was salt growing up. <laughs> so now on to the people who make this awesome event possible. Ms. Shalonda Stokes. Now she is the CEO of Graybo Entertainment and the event producer of the 2013 African American Festival. Now if you don't know, they call her the Olivia Pope of Baltimore. So those of you who watch Scandal, you know, and if you don't watch Scandal, you know somebody who does, so even still, you know, Olivia Pope is awesome. So Shalonda and her team have been credited with helping clients fix properties, problems, and build brands. So about three years ago, she was asked to rebrand the African American Festival, and according to the record-breaking numbers and favorable media surrounding the event, she has done just that. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ms. Shalonda Stokes. Thank you. When you think you're going to be outside first, you know, we were planning for this thing, and I just seeing everybody in here is so overwhelming. Um, good morning, I thank you. Um, thank you, Brandy, for such a wonderful introduction. I'm thinking, if I'm Olivia Pope, who at Graybo is Hutch? <laughs> I ain't gonna say nothing, Davis Gray, but uh, <laughs> I definitely wanna thank my business partners. Davis Gray is here, Philip Stokes, Stokes is here, and our newest partner, Paige is here, um, and I'd also like to thank the entire Grable team. I can't go through all of our team members, but Catrice, EJ, Ada, Voss, um, Nika, I don't wanna leave anybody out. I know, I don't know if I said EJ, and then we have our city team, which, I, I mean, the city team is unbelievable. We have DPW, Public Works, the Mayor's Office, everybody, Sharon, Myra, Marva, we have Sheila from BOFA, Teresa, Mark, I mean, just the whole crew. And so this is truly a village that is taken to do this. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge um, a guest that's here, and he's become a part of our family. I told him he actually came here to work a little bit, but he, I, and he didn't have to work. Um, Mr. Chu Smith, one of the former original Harlem Globetrotters, if you could just stand up and do it. Introductions. I also have all the way with our Asian delegation, Mr. Eddie Shack, who's bringing um, a lot to really make the connection. The mayor, I know, I know, Madam Mayor, you're going to do a lot of introductions. So I won't go through too much of what you're going to say, but I do want to say that this year's festival is really going to bring some great experiences. I mean, some of our partners that you'll introduce and acknowledge are phenomenal. We can't. I mean, this this list is only a, a sampling of the love that we feel for this, and it wouldn't happen without all of you guys, and I appreciate that. Um, I do want to, and I thank you, Brandy, for, for talking about this festival. People talk about the festival at different years, and you'll hear different names. They, they call it AFRAM, they call it all of these other things. It did start back in 76, calling it AFRAM, and, and the meaning behind the festival and all of that was really about community engagement, it was about culture, it was about all of those things that make us us. It wasn't, it wasn't a black thing, it wasn't a white thing, it wasn't any of that, but it was how do we create, bring culture together with economic development, with health, with all of those things that we stand for. And so with this festival at that time, it was the only means to really truly showcase the positive outcomes 
and galvanize the brotherhood and sisterhood. So the question was, am I my brother's keeper? And the answer is, yes I am. <laughs> celebration and it's the center of what we stand for. Last year, as she mentioned, in the midst of record breaking and for those of you who were there last year, I don't know that there was ever a day hotter in the history of the world. <laughs> but we still had nearly 400,000 festival attendees sold out the hotels and over 1,500 health screenings and, and, and assessments and signings and all of that. So I think that deserves a round of applause. And the best part is we did it free, right? It was free to attendees to come, and it was free, not because I said it had to be free. Somebody in here said it had to be free. And, and um, the sponsors really came together and made sure we could do that along with the city of Baltimore. This year we do have to, in the, in the spirit of keeping it free, and I'm looking at Rodney from Coke, we have to keep it free. But we do have responsibilities to our sponsors. And so what we're doing this year is we're making sure that, um, noting that people cannot bring outside food or drinks into the festival this year. And so we really want to make sure for our vendors, for our sponsors, for our partners, that when people are coming to the festival, they're activating with them. And that's the only way we can continue to keep it free. So we want to do that. Because I, I got a charge. And uh, when the mayor spoke with our team, and, and everybody knows, when she says it has to happen, it has to happen. And she gave us a few charges. She said, make sure it's free. Make sure it's a family event. We had to do that. She said, make sure that everybody is at the table, not just the large businesses, but our communities, our, you know, our families. Make sure all of them are at the table, the nonprofits. She said, make sure it's a part of what makes it a summer destination. You know, she said, Visit Baltimore isn't there just promoting for the heck of it. But she didn't use that word heck, no. But she said, she wanted to make sure it's a destination. She said, and make sure at the end of it, we walk away healthier, happier, and that we definitely have some good talent. And so with that, we have it free. We have some additions to it. We have a family reunion event that we're doing on Saturday to bring the families out. We have a Greek day, inclusive step show. Across the city, you'll start to see some really good, um, really good activations and ways to get everybody engaged. And so that part will be great. And so who you'll hear next is this, this wonderful woman that I'm talking about. When she says stuff, she makes it happen. She said we needed to grow the city by 10,000 families and the population has already increased. Another round of applause, please. And when she said our school system needed to be on par, if not greater than our neighboring counties, test scores soared. And when she said we needed to ensure minority businesses were at the table to, to have economic parity, we did that and we started to do that and we're doing that with the commission. So ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome the real Olivia Pope. I mean the mayor of Baltimore, the Honorable Mayor Stephanie Rollins. Thank you, thank you, Shalonda. Thanks for the kind introduction and for all of your hard work. I mean, it's, it is really a pleasure for me to have the opportunity to work with someone who is known for excellence, known for uh, making things happen and doing it in a classy way that really represents our city. So I'm very, very uh, proud to be here. And I'm proud to be here with so many of you. I see our comptroller here, Joan Pratt. 
Thank you for joining us. All right, my uh, the city council president Jack Young. He he beat me here. We've been at uh, this is our second event together already this morning. It's not even noon. Uh, Councilman Brandon Scott. Looking forward to seeing you out there at the festival again this year. I also want to thank my police commissioner Anthony Batts uh, for being here. Um, you didn't you didn't you weren't here this for this festival, so we're going to show you. you. You might think you know something out in California. We're going to show you how it's done <laughs> in Baltimore. It's going to be great. And I, I see uh, Councilman Carl Stokes is here. I want to thank my DPW director, Al Fox. I want to thank um, Sandra Baker, executive director of the Environmental Control Board for doing such a fantastic job. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, representing Visit Baltimore, who uh, makes sure that this event gets publicized in a, a, a great way is Dion Joyner Weems. I want to thank Sharon Pender, my Office of Minority and Women-Owned Business. I want to thank I want to make sure I'm getting everybody. If I missed you, please forgive me. I, I, I want to make sure I get all of our, the representatives. And I want to give a special thanks again to Shalonda uh, Stokes and Davis Gray and the entire Graybo team for taking on the task of producing the festival and helping us achieve success over the past two years. Last year was definitely one of the hottest shows ever. You know it has to be bad if I had to have on shorts. That was a, it was a desperate situation. But it was so, I, I, I don't remember it being hotter. I, I, I'm telling you. So I don't know what we're gonna, I, I saw on the, the Today Show they have one of those hacks that has the air conditioner in the front that's a little fan. So if I don't look too silly, I might have to break that out. Because if it's hot again, it will fit my head, Brandon. <laughs> But it was, it was hot. I'm hot just thinking about it. So anyway, I'm not just, you know, it, it was a record-breaking heat, but it was, as one of my friends says, firecracker hot with the music soul child and the legends of hip-hop. They were on fire. It was a great show. We had to bring it back old school. And we're truly making Baltimore a key destination for people on the East Coast, from our ethnic and arts festivals uh, to the Grand Prix of Baltimore. We're giving people a reason to stay, to visit, and to move to Baltimore. And I believe that we live in one of the most vibrant and exciting cities in the country. And I love an opportunity to showcase and show off uh, to people from up and down the East Coast. And that's what we do. Um, we have the African American Festival. It draws thousands of visitors from our neighboring states, which is always a boon to our local economy. And Shalanda alluded to that as well. The festival of this magnitude could only happen uh, with the leadership of our advisory board, chaired by uh, Kathy Hughes, our steering committee, the host of dedicated volunteers. I'm going to thank you in advance, and I'm going to thank you twice, just in case it's as hot as it was last year, because I know the volunteers. I felt bad for y'all out in the heat. Did, we had the we had the black shirts again last year. We was black, and then the it was just hot. Again, I'm just think, hot thinking about it. And I also want to thank my staff who devoted so much of their time and leadership to this effort. Calliope Parthemos, Sharon Pinder, Marva Williams, Myra Blanchard, uh, Teresa Hall, Sheila Goodwin, and Mark Dennis. Thank you all for your hard work. And I also want to thank uh, our partners from uh, the Radio One uh, uh, family. Kathy Howard, thank you. Uh, you know that this would not and could not be as uh, big as it has become without the support of the Radio One family, who's really been um, not just a sponsor, but a partner. I want to thank you for that. We're excited that the team has decided to host uh, the Stone Soul Picnic at the African American Festival again this year. I'm also honored to welcome our new national media uh, partner, Black Enterprise, who will lend their print, broadcast, and digital media, uh, media platforms to the event. We couldn't make this happen without the support of our sponsors, and in addition to the financial commitments, our sponsors are planning some exciting experiences for the festival, from the sports challenges to scavenger hunts, as well as obstacle courses. And I, you think I didn't see you, Michelle, here on behalf of Senator Mikulski, thank you very much. She's been a tremendous support to, to our community, and thank you for representing her uh, here with us at this event. So after all of those things are said, this is something that you definitely don't want to miss. I want to take a second to just formally uh, thank our committed sponsors and ask uh, that uh, as soon as we're done with the program that you join us up here for a group uh, picture. So our 2013 African American Festival sponsors include Coca-Cola, 
Kaiser Permanente, Visit Baltimore, State Farm, Morgan State University, the U.S. Marine Corps, MTA, uh, Care First, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Under Armour, ShopRite, GBL Sales, Ambi, Organic Group Stimulator, Maryland Department of Business and Economic Development, Whiting Turner, Xfinity, AARP, uh, the Maryland State Lottery, Chusman Enterprises, Giant, Colgate, Palmolive, ISIS, iStems, excuse me, EMC, and Barefoot Wine. We're also fortunate to have many media sponsors, including Black Enterprise Magazine, Sister to Sister Magazine, the Radio One Family, Magic 95.5, 92Q, Spirit 1400 and WOLB, Fox 45, and the African American Newspaper, the Baltimore Times, and the Baltimore Sun. This is a group effort. This year, uh, the African American Festival takes place on Saturday, July 6th and 7th, and as we continue the theme, a celebration of life, music, and culture, we are introducing new exciting ways to honor our past, celebrate our accomplishments, and showcase our future. We are creating new air-conditioned experiences. <laughs> STEM Nation presents by Morgan State University, which includes interactive demonstrations and exhibits highlighting science, technology, engineering, and math, health and wellness presented by Kaiser Permanente, offering, offering health screenings and testings, fitness demonstrations and nutrition seminars with celebrity chefs, the Black Enterprise and Parmenten with wealth creation and preservation presentations, seminars, and exhibits, and the Beauty Bar. Presented by Andy and excuse me, Organic Root Stimulator with the women and men's beauty and grooming demonstrations, samples, which I love, tips and techniques. And we will have exciting entertainment throughout the weekend for all ages. As Shalonda says, this is a family event, a, a multi-generation event. Visit Baltimore is helping to make Saturday the ultimate family reunion and the fraternities and sororities are taking over on Sunday with a Greek day step show. So I'm hoping that all of my Greek brothers and sisters will dust off their moves and we can see some old school step show action. It's called Step Like You Mean It. And I know there might be a few of y'all left that can step like you mean it. So hopefully we'll see it. So for those 21 and over, Barefoot Wine is presenting a wine down. Nothing wrong with that. And if all of that entertainment is not enough, headlining on Saturday, we have American Idol actress and Grammy Award winning and R&B sensation, Fantasia. Fantastic, right? And on Sunday is the true R&B diva and godmother of soul. Not to mention, she is absolutely, hands down, one of my favorite artists, the one and only Patti LaBelle. <laughs> what is that for me to sing? Because I can do it. <laughs> I need a second. Patty. I told her there was one song I broke the record player playing her song. I said it got me through. 
So these national artists will be joined over the weekend with other local artists. You know we have a, a wealth of local artists in Baltimore and uh, other entertainers, and we're announcing new additions daily, so stay tuned to our, our website, Facebook, and Twitter so that you are in the know. I can't wait to join you and hundreds of others, hundreds of thousands of others, and visitors and residents this July. It's going to be a fantastic weekend. I look forward to seeing you all there. Another great job, everyone uh, that was on board. Who did I miss? I missed someone. Oh, I do want to acknowledge Councilwoman Mary Pat Clark was here. She had to go, as all of us do, because we're about to have a, a, a council meeting. Big, important business, but we had to take a break for Patty. So thank you all for coming out, and I'm going to turn it back over to Brandy. Alrighty, thank you all very much. Thank you so much, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Pat. Um, <laughs> we want to now have greetings from the festival's radio partner, Howard Mazur, General Manager of Radio One, followed by this year's sponsor of the festival's health and wellness experience, Ms. Maritha Gay, Senior Director of External Affairs for Kaiser Permanente. Good morning. Um, Good morning. About 20 years ago, our founder, Kathy Hughes, gave us a charge at the radio station, and that was to put on a free event at Druid Hill Park that the anticipation was 5,000 people. That day, there were 25,000 people, and 18 years later, there was 150,000 plus people. About three years ago, the mayor called and asked if we would join the African American Festival. It was not a tough, difficult decision to make. We thought this was a bigger event, event that we would have, we'd be proud to be part of, and one that was a heritage event. So for the last three years, we have been honored to be part of this event, to have the Stone Soul Picnic stage, and to help put this event on. Shalanda comes up here kind of low key. This event starts on the second or third of every year, it ends on the 5th or the 6th, and it starts the next day planning this. So Shalanda, I have to applaud you because you, it's not easy, and we appreciate that. Uh, we talk about how hot it was. About three years ago, the mayor will remember, uh, we were outside, and I really believe that was the hottest day that I've ever experienced in my life. So thank you for letting us come into your house where it is cool. <laughs> Uh, on our end, there's quite a few people I want to thank, but anybody here from Radio One, thank you for joining us today, and a round of applause for you. Put your hands up. Um, but there's a lot of people behind the scenes. There's Dave Wilner and his sales staff, who goes out and sells this event. There's Al Payne, who's our program director, who helps get the acts and promotes this event for months at a time. Um, there's his jocks who participate. And there's one guy, Bobby Cardoni, who's the guy behind the scenes who we would not be able to put this on if it wasn't for him. Bobby, I know you're here, so. So again, Madam Mayor and Shalanda and everybody else, we thank you for letting Radio One be a part of this auspicious event. And we look forward to a cool day with great sun. As Kathy, you said, that's the only things that happen. We always have a great day with Sun, and we thank you for being letting us be part of this event. Good morning. My name is Maritha Gay. I'm the Senior Director of External Affairs for Kaiser Permanente, and I oversee the community benefit efforts where we're trying to improve the health and well-being of the community at large, and Baltimore is a very important area for us, and we're very excited to be a part of uh, the festi festival this year. You know, at Kaiser Permanente, we, we believe that good health belongs to everyone, and we work tirelessly to really reduce disparities so that good health can be a reality for everyone. And we know we cannot do it alone, so we are so proud to be working with the mayor's office and with our local community partners to really determine how best we can share our knowledge and resources at Kaiser Permanente. We are a huge 
uh, uh, integrated medical facility um, in the Baltimore area, and we have a huge presence here now with our new Baltimore Medical Center, our South Baltimore Medical Center, and we couldn't think of another way to really come out and have a strong presence to really um, support the pavilion, the health pavilion. So we know we can't do this work alone, and we do it in a collaborative manner, and uh, we couldn't do it without everyone here who's here to support the event at, at, at large. We also know, as for Kaiser Permanente, our mission is about improving the total health of our members, but also the communities at large. And we do this by increasing access to health care, and then again, sharing the knowledge that we have. So we don't want to keep it within and just for our members. There is a lot of important information, resources that we want to share. And we're going to take the opportunity at the Health Pavilion to really try to get people active, to get them engaged around the importance of taking care of themselves, and by providing um, education, resources, tools, and we may even do a little bit of dancing. So I'm hoping you all can join us to really help support Baltimore. We're very committed to Baltimore. We connect with patients every day, but we couldn't think of a better way to really connect with the community. Because sometimes you gotta meet the community where they are, and then you can't always you know, have them come to you. So we're coming out, it's our first time. We know that it's gonna be a success just from today and the number of people that are here and the number of partners that we're here. I am ready, I'm inspired. I can't wait to see all of the the, the acts and the, the entertainment, and I'm really looking forward to it. Hopefully all of you will plan on joining us as well. So thank you again. Thank you, Mr. Gay. Thank you, Mr. Mazur. So in addition to Kaiser Permanente and Radio One, we do have a couple sponsors in addition to the ones that Madam Mayor mentioned that we have not thanked. So we want to give a special thanks to BGE and Exelon. Mr. Calvin Butler has really taken care of things over there. Thank you, Mr. Calvin. And as far as today's event and the festival, we also want to thank Lisa Marie Events and, of course, DJ Little Mike. He is over there in charge of all of our partying and making sure we don't hear that awful screeching noise from this microphone. So thank you to the both of them. So at this time, we would like to ask Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake and Ms. Shalonda Stokes to come on back up here. They can answer any questions that you may have about this lovely event. The only easy question. <laughs> Any questions? You want to know where you can get the air conditioner hat? <laughs> all right, thank you again to all of the sponsors. I'm really, really looking forward to a wonderful weekend, especially with Fantasia and my absolute favorite, Patty. Thank you.